order. Okay, hello everyone. My name is Eloisa Ramos and I'm here with my friend Connie. Hi hello. Connie. Hi. So we are continuing with a study of the text of A Course in Miracles. We're on chapter 14, Teaching for Truth. And we are doing a really long section, um, The Test of Truth, which is 11. Oh, it's the last one, yeah. Mm -hmm. And we left off with paragraph seven. Okay, we're just going to review the like the first line so we, you know, kind of catch up on what what's going on here. Okay, paragraph one, line one. Yet the essential thing is learning that you do not know. Okay, knowledge is power, and all power is of God. OK, the ego would say otherwise. It would say, oh, no, we usurped the power of God. OK, so therefore, I know, <laughs> I know, I know. OK, and when we are in that position, we don't open the mind to learning the course um, because it's an undoing of what we have learned. And then we're going to protect what we think we know. OK, so. Oh, that's what line paragraph two is. Be willing then for all of it to be undone and be glad that you are not bound to it forever. Okay. So it's a good thing to have what we think we know undone. There's, uh, it's not a bad thing. Um, it's all fear based. And, um, you know, we don't, um, we don't want fear. It's not in our best interest. Okay. Okay. Uh, paragraph three, atonement teaches you how to escape forever from everything that you have taught yourself in the past by showing you only what you are now. Okay. Um, and also learning has been accomplished before its effects are manifest. Okay. So we can't expect our world to manifest our new learning <laughs> before we learn it. Okay, we can't look, you know, the idea of seeing is believing doesn't work. Okay, because the learning, the believing has to come first. Um, otherwise, we're just going to sit there and wait, and wait, and wait um, for the world to change. <laughs> I think there's a song that goes like that. Um, okay, paragraph four. You who have not yet brought all of the darkness you have taught yourself into the light in you can hardly judge the truth and value of this course. Okay. So we're not in a position to judge the value of this course precisely because our mind is still not completely healed. <laughs> um, it's unhealed. If it's not completely healed, it's unhealed. So, uh, paragraph five, you have one test as sure as God by which to recognize if what you have learned is true. If you are wholly free of fear of any kind, and if all those who meet or even think of you share in your perfect peace, then you can be sure that you have learned God's lessons and not your own. Okay. Okay. Yes, so we want to uh, release fear um, and, you know, in anything that comes up. Um, so let's see, six, do not be concerned about how you can learn a lesson so completely different from everything that you have taught yourself. Okay, your part is very simple. Um, when your peace is threatened or disturbed in any way, say to yourself, I do not know what anything, including this, means. And so I do not know how to respond to it. And I will not use my own past learning as the light to guide me now. Okay. So I was practicing this during the week, and that was really, really helpful. And what I noticed is that the, the situations where I practiced it, um, uh, the actual event that was portrayed to be fearful actually uh, did not uh, imprint in memory. So I can't remember what it was. I remember the event of what someone told me that that was something about the war somewhere, but I 
but the specifics of it w were not remembered because I used, I didn't give any meaning to it <laughs> by using this little phrase here that we're given. Um, okay, seven. Uh, do you wanna start Connie since I kind of did the re review? Um, just that uh, piece about imprinting, that, that's interesting that yeah. it won't, yeah, won't. Yeah, that's what I noticed. I thought, I thought, oh, that, that is very interesting because, mm -hmm. you know, if I think back on it, I can remember the exact situation. We were in the kitchen, there was my son and he was telling me, and I know what he was telling me about, but the actual event that he talked about, which was something about the war, Okay, nothing there at all, <laughs> uh -huh. which is really a blessing, honestly. Yes. Who wants to yeah. have their memory full of, you know, traumatic events that happen in wartime kind of a thing, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. yeah. 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 Don't pick it up. Yeah. Yeah. So Don't. that's what this, that's what this uh, allowed <laughs> So it's almost like, um, I want to say that it's a vigilance for the thoughts of God, because it did not allow that to come into the mind. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, seven. <clears throat> you cannot be your guide to miracles, for it is you who made them necessary. And because you did, the means on which you can depend for miracles has been provided for you. God's son can make no needs. His father will not meet if he but turn to him ever so little. Yet he cannot compel his son to turn to him and remain himself. It is impossible that God lose his identity for if he did, you would lose yours. And being yours, he cannot change himself, for your identity is changeless. The miracle acknowledges his changelessness by seeing his son as he always was, and not as he would make himself. The miracle brings the effects that only guiltlessness can bring, and thus establishes the fact that guiltlessness must be. Okay, so I mean, it's it's using words that are pretty abstract, but um, you know, we cannot be our own guide to miracles because we're the one that made them necessary. Um, so the healing of the mind cannot be done by the ego that made sickness. Okay, um, so we cannot turn to the ego for miracles. We need the Holy Spirit. Um, okay, but God provides for all of our needs. If we just turn to him ever so little. Um, okay, but he cannot compel okay, his son to turn to him and remain himself. So the love of God, the power of God's will is complete freedom because that's what God gave us is a complete free will okay so to compel would mean to combat or to force or to oppose in some way you see so there would be conflict there and that would imply separation which is not true so god cannot do that because separation is not real um, if he did that he could not remain himself whole complete Okay, and of course, it's impossible that God lose his identity because he's eternal and changeless. And if he did, then we would lose ours because our identity is an inheritance from our source. We didn't make it ourselves. We think we can change it, but that's not true. That's just the idea of the ego of being separate, that the belief that we actually accomplish the separation and therefore are no longer a son of God, you know, where 
something else that we made of ourselves. Um, okay, so God's identity and our identity is changeless. It's eternal love. It's a creative power. It's life, okay? And that cannot be changed. So, so the miracle acknowledges this because it returns us. It's a return or a remembering of the truth. Okay. So this is a teaching for truth. It's the, you know, so it's the miracle restores the mind to the awareness of the truth of our identity in God as changeless, as innocent, completely holy, innocent, whole, um, a blessing, a light of the world. Okay. Um, so the miracle then heals. That would be the effects that we would see um, because guiltlessness is what undoes guilt and punishment and sickness. And, um, and thus establishes the fact that guiltlessness must be the truth. Okay. It is the power <laughs> that is above and beyond what the world can offer and what the ego can offer as an illusion. Okay. Eight. Any, any questions, Connie, or is that good? Okay. Eight. How can you so firmly bound to guilt and committed so to remain established for yourself your guiltlessness? That is impossible. But be sure that you are willing to acknowledge that it is impossible. It is only because you think that you can run some little part or deal with certain aspects of your life alone that the guidance of the Holy Spirit is limited. Thus would you make him undependable and use this fancied undependability as an excuse for keeping certain dark lessons from him. And by so limiting the guidance that you would accept, you are unable to depend on miracles to answer all your problems for you. Okay. So we, uh, um, yes, so our um, belief in separation means that we are bound to guilt. Because when we believe that we accomplished it, then it believes we believe that we have um, made God not whole, that we have changed God somehow because we've taken a part from God away, which is what we are. <laughs> so now we think that we are just a part, that we are incomplete, okay? Um, and so we, with that kind of guilt, believing that the separation was accomplished, that we actually attack God in some way, we cannot um, remove that on our own as an incomplete self, separated self. That's impossible. The ego can't do that. Okay, but we want to acknowledge that it is impossible um, because, because that's where the trust comes in. You know, we get ourselves out of the way. The, the minute we think we can save ourselves, solve, solve our own problems, then we're not completely giving everything over to the Holy Spirit. Okay, we're trying to hold on to a part that thinks it can be independent and on its own and not uh, require help from Holy Spirit. Um, it is only because you think you can run some little part see, or deal with certain aspects of your life alone, um, that we limit that guidance. So you can almost say that it's about um, yeah, not not uh, not making the illusion a matter of degree. It's all, <laughs> you know, it's all or not or nothing. Basically, thus you would make him undependable otherwise. Um, and and then we would hide or keep some of our dark lessons or beliefs that we're not willing to undo from him. And um, 
and and so then what we say is well miracles are not dependable i'm you know asking holy spirit and holy spirit's not answering me okay so i can't depend on the holy spirit for help so that's what we do by limiting the guidance uh but we're doing it and then we're just projecting it and saying oh well no um you know it's holy spirit's undependable <laughs> okay it's a projection so it's really we're really talking about ourselves we're undependable um, because uh, you know we are protecting um, some of our beliefs and what it means is that we want to continue um, to believe that we can judge others and judge and hold on to grievances um, as being justified we want to hold on to justified attack okay mm, nine Do you think that what the Holy Spirit would have you give, he would, would withhold from you? You have no problems that he cannot solve by offering you a miracle. Miracles are for you, and every fear or pain or trial you have has been undone. He has brought all of them to light, having accepted them instead of you and recognized they never were. There are no dark lessons he has not already lightened for you. The lessons you would teach yourself, he has corrected already. They do not exist in his mind at all, for the past binds him not, and therefore binds not you. He does not see time as you do, and each miracle he offers you corrects your use of time and makes it his. It's worded really like, oh, got to kind of really. Yeah, yeah, it. yeah, it is. It's, it's interesting. So, um, okay, so this is a course in miracles. So do you think the Holy Spirit would, would have you, uh, would have you give, he would with what he would have you give, would he withhold from you? Well, no, right? Uh, he, it's a course in miracles. So he's teaching us how to perform miracles so he would not withhold miracles from us because that's what he's teaching us um so so there are no problems that he cannot solve by offering us miracles because miracles are for us because we're the ones that think we have an unhealed mind okay okay but the holy spirit now is the mm, the mind that is still our mind <laughs> um it, but that remembers the truth so every fear or pain or trial you have has been undone so when god gave answer to the tiny mad idea of the ego everything was undone in that instant okay and the holy spirit remembers that for us so so um he brought all of those uh, trials, pain, and fears. He brought all of them to light. So they've all been healed. So the mind that thinks is sick is not really sick. It's healed already, okay? But, is, but it's not remembering that. It's, it has blocked the awareness of the truth. It has blocked the light of that truth. So the Holy Spirit accepted all of those, uh, accepted the miracles, the atonement. That's why the Holy Spirit offers atonement instead of you. 
See, having accept, accepted them instead of you. So all of the miracles, all of the healing is already in our mind. It's just that we dissociate from it. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's why Six says there are no dark lessons he has not already lighted for you. So this is, time is a, an illusion because it seems to be happening now, but it's not. It's all the past, all the past. <laughs> a few, the first few lessons, I see only the past. Bodies, I see only the past. So, so that's why the course, there's a you know metaphor of the mind is asleep and dreaming. Okay, that there's still all this uh, fear and pain and, and, and trials going on, okay? But that's that's a past memory. It's not there anymore. Uh, but we're holding on to the past memory um, because uh, we're holding on to that past memory, believing that, that that's what we are as a character in the dream. That we are, you know, everything that we've gone through, our trials, our pains, our fears, it's our story. So we're confusing ourselves with the character in the dream, the body, um, who's the action figure. Um, <laughs> uh, so there we are fighting and struggling and, you know, because we think we're the little action figure in the, in the video game or in the movie um in the in the dream okay they do not exist in his mind at all okay so uh, capital h his capital m mind so all of that that we are believing we are is false um and um it's like being stuck in a dream you know and not being aware that oh I'm not the character in the dream. Um, okay, so he doesn't. He does not see time as you do. Okay, and each miracle he offers you corrects your use of time and makes it his. Yeah. So we see time as having a past and a future, and then we kind of skip over the present moment. We confuse it with. Um, what do we confuse it with sometimes? Just trying to remember. Um, yeah. Okay. Let's start we confusing it with the past and and the future anytime we're yes, because when you we're talking about expectations, right? Mm -hmm. So when you have an expectation, we are taking the past and we're saying, mm -hmm. okay, this is how it should be in the future. And I'm basing it on my own past learning. Mm -hmm. So the meaning mm -hmm. that I have given to, and, and basically experiences, when you think of your memories as experiences, okay, that's not really true because those memories are not complete. They're incomplete. So they're subjective and they're biased. Mm -hmm. So they're actually not real experiences. They're false experiences. And that's how we make up a false self, an ego-separated self, by believing them to be true. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, they're incomplete. And what was the other thing you said? They're just... Well, they're biased, okay? Because okay. we use them to project and to make expectations and plans, believing that that is the truth of how things are, but it's really a way to use perception to see what we want to see. So we want reality to conform to our expectations, to our wishes of how things should be. Yeah. And that's our own learning. Those are all our own past memories. Yes. Uh, their conclusions, their judgments that we have made, you know, oh, that was wrong. It should have been this way. And, you know, so. Um, so it's a whole little story, a whole little point of view that says, um, let's see, that I am my own 
maker of my life, my experience in time <laughs> as a separate self, you see. Mm -hmm. And it's not true. Where what our true identity is oneness. It's a Christ mind that is shared by all of creation. So it's one son. So we complete, completely uh, mm -hmm. overshadow the truth of oneness by focusing on all these specific problems that we have and how we want things to be, <laughs> how we want things to happen. It's very specific. <laughs> very specific demands that we put on ourselves and others in the world. Okay. Mm. Um, yeah, just the whole thing about time. That's that's really helpful. Yeah. Boy. Yeah. Okay. So ten. Um, yeah. Okay. He who has freed you from the past would teach you are free of it. He would but have you accept his accomplishments as yours because he did them for you. And because he did, they are yours. He has made you free of what you made. You can deny him, but you cannot call on him in vain. He always gives his gifts in place of yours. He would establish his bright teaching so firmly in your mind that no dark lesson of guilt can abide in what he has established as holy by his presence. Thank God that he is there and works through you. And all his works are yours. He offers you a miracle with everyone you let him do through you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, so he has freed us from the past and he would teach us that we are free of it, that that is the truth. Okay, so just because we see the past with the body's eyes doesn't mean we have to believe it. You know, we have to, at some point, the mind has to recognize Oh, that's not true. That's a lie. That's not in my best interest to believe, even though I'm seeing it with my eyes. <laughs> you know, at some point, we have to begin to question what the body's eyes see and not trust the perception of the body so completely. Because obviously, it's it's incomplete. You know, it's imperfect. Um. Okay, so so the Holy Spirit offers us everything basically. Um, we just we just have to receive it, mm, accept that, accept it. He would have you accept his accomplishments as yours. And so the miracles are um, those lessons that come through Holy Spirit through us, um, works through you. Eight, thank God that he is there and works through you. Um, you know, when we're free of fear. So we want to be able to be in a place of, of trust and peace to be able to um, receive the miracle so that we can offer the miracle as a blessing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, miracles are seen in light. So the mind has to be, without fear to be able to be in light, to be able to see the miracle, to be able to accept it, to be able to offer it. Okay, 11. God's son will always be indivisible. As we are held as one in God, so do we learn as one in him. God's teacher is as like to his creator as is his son. And through his teacher does God proclaim his oneness and his sons. Listen in silence and do not raise your voice against him. For he teaches the miracle of oneness. And before his lesson, division disappears. 
teach like him here and you will remember that you have always created like your father. The miracle of creation has never ceased having the holy stamp of immortality upon it. This is the will of God for all creation and all creation joins in willing this. Okay, uh, line one, uh, Connie, did you say invisible or indivisible? I didn't quite catch that. I thought I said indivisible. Okay, yeah. good. good. Undivided. Good, good. Yes, God's son will always be undivided. Yeah, indivisible. Okay, without separation. Uh, so despite what the eye see, and, and the, what the eye see, it labels attack. Okay, because that's what division is. Opposition, conflict, that's all divisiveness. Um, okay, but, but the holy perception says, okay, that's not true. Okay, that's actually not really possible. The mind is holy and has not stopped being holy. So, and there is no separation, so it cannot attack. Um, and the world of matter is is not mind, okay? It's if we consider it physical and body, it's all matter. So there's no separation there either, <laughs> even though the eyes perceive separation. Okay, the space between me and this computer is not empty. There's matter there. There's air. Okay, there's carbon dioxide, there's oxygen, there's air there. So it's a denser form, you know, but it's still matter. So um, so there's no real separation there either. Um, so the oneness is what we be begin to recognize once we practice the, the buying into the attack thoughts you know, the idea that I can be attacked and and I can attack, which is what um, would say that we are separate and not indivisible, okay? Um, so let's see. Um, yeah, so we are, God's teacher is like to his creator. So God's teacher is the Holy Spirit, is like to his creator as his son. And through his teacher, teacher does God proclaim his oneness and his sons. That's the lesson. That's the truth. <laughs> um, and so listen in silence. Do not raise your voice against him. Okay, so our voice is the ego's voice and we made it. Okay, and it's a very strong voice because it's a voice of defense and it has a lot of emotion to it. Well, how dare you, you know? <laughs> I am offended. I've been disrespected. <laughs> yes, of course I'm wrong. I'm always wrong. You're always right, you know? So it's either the... <laughs> it's either the whining or it's the, the bullying, you know? It's the same voice. Uh, um, or it's the protection, you know, you better do as I say, because, you know, I know more than you, <laughs> you better do it the right way. That's the wrong way. Uh, uh, so there's a lot of confusion there because, you know, everyone, every ego self that believes is a separate self wants to claim authority over some, some area of expertise. And, um, thinks it knows so uh let's see so teach like him here and you will remember that you have always created like your father so teach oneness right practice forgiveness um because without practicing forgiveness we can't teach oneness how are we going to teach oneness if we're holding on to grievances <laughs> and separation <laughs> okay <laughs> The miracle of creation has never ceased, having the holy stamp of immortality upon it. Um, so the miracle of creation is that um, 
is that to the mind who believes in scarcity and believes in uh, li limit limitation, um, the creation is a miracle because it is unending. It has no beginning, no end. Um, it's eternal. It's Im immortal. Um, and this is the will of God. This is what the will of God is for for everyone. And all creation joins in willing this. So we are not separate from that. Um, so you could say that the Holy Spirit is our will, our true will. You know? Um, and because it's not separate from God. And so the false self, the ego, the body would be a an illusion of a separate will apart from God that can oppose God, which would be, um, you know, a delusion or an il illusion of a sick mind. Yeah. Okay. Twelve. Oh, it's my turn, huh, Connie? Because we switched. Yeah. Those who remember always that they know nothing and who have become willing to learn everything will learn it. But whenever they trust themselves, they will not learn. They have destroyed their motivation for learning by thinking they already know. Think not you understand anything until you pass the test of perfect peace. For peace and understanding go together and never can be found alone. Each brings the other with it. For it is the law of God that they be not separate. They are cause and effect each to the other. So where one is absent, the other cannot be. Okay, so that's a really, you know, good thing to remember there. Um, and so we want to uh, remember that we do not know anything <laughs> or or that we know nothing. So because the ego is nothing and that's what we know, nothing. Um, and therefore, we have become willing to learn everything. Um because, you know, we're starting to wake up and we're starting to see that what we do know is completely unreliable. And therefore, there's no point. It's nothing. Um, it's, it's not truly helpful. So, um, so at that point, we start letting go of trusting in our own past learning. Uh, they, but, and, but whenever we go back to trust, our own learning, then uh, we trust we trust ourselves, and we stop learning. They will not learn. Um, they have destroyed their motivation for learning by thinking they already know. Yes, and we stop being peaceful. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, yeah. Because we stop understanding anything, right? We we depart from receiving. Holy Spirit, uh, which is the link to knowledge. So then we don't understand anything. We block the awareness of understanding. Um, and and with that, you know, there's fear, right? Uh, so there's no peace there. Once we block understanding, um, we don't have peace and there's going to be fear. Okay. Uh, 13. <clears throat> Only those who recognize they cannot know unless the effects of understanding are with them can really learn at all. For this, it must be peace they want and nothing else. Whenever you think you know, peace will depart from you because you have abandoned the teacher of peace. Whenever you fully realize that you know not, peace will return, for you will have invited him to do so. By abandoning the ego on behalf of him, 
Call not upon the ego for anything. It is only this that you need do. The Holy Spirit will of himself fill every mind that so makes room for him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so line five, right, Connie? Line five? Oh, I'm, yeah. I was underlining three. Three? <laughs> okay, whenever you think you know, yeah. Peaceful depart because you've abandoned the teacher. Yes, okay, and five. Call not upon, yeah. Yep. Over and over, we're told this. Mm hmm make room for understanding yes so um mm. so so in the moment we want to you know be open to receiving guidance by recognizing we do not know how to respond to this um i do not know what anything including this means so, so, uh, and I will not use my own past learning, see, as the light to guide me now. So that would be, that would be abandoning the ego to not use my own past learning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, call not upon the ego for anything. Yeah, so don't, don't go back to the past um, when you're in a, you know, what seems to be a problem. You want to be open to seeing it differently. Yeah. It's like right now I'm trying to navigate through to learning the Medicare system and what I need to do. It is unbelievable the volumes of, you know, just paperwork and stuff to read through to figure out what makes the most sense for me and it's like ah uh, okay okay so once you, once you hear yourself say what makes the most sense for me okay that's the separated self okay yes so yes. so you want to immediately turn it over to the holy spirit decide for me for god because I do not know what anything, including this Medicare stuff, means. And so I do not know how to respond to it. And therefore, I do not know how to decide anything here. And I will not use my own past learning as the light to guide me now. So Holy Spirit, decide for me. And you just open to receiving. Well, I want... Holy Spirit to just go, okay, point, pick that one <laughs> without having to read through. Well, oh. well, it, it'll show up in some way. Maybe it'll show up that way, yeah. but. Um, okay, eventually after reading through it, all, yes, yes. Okay, it's my stuck place of not wanting to read manuals on how to do things or learn how to use my phone. <laughs> And learning, you know, just, oh, I just, yeah, it just feels like so much to work okay. through in this dream. Well, that's interesting because, see, at the top of paragraph 13, it says, only those who recognize they cannot know um, unless the effects of understanding are with them can really learn at all. So I need to be in a peaceful state or I'm not going to be able to learn. Yes. And that can only come through connecting with source. Yep. Yes. Yes. Because you're, you're already, you're already making a judgment there that it's complicated. Yes. So yes. you have to let go of that judgment because that's locking you into that perception. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I knew that somewhere. 
you did in my right mind <laughs> yes you did exactly it's all in there yeah it's all there okay 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 peace 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 <laughs> okay so is it your turn to read 14 yeah uh, um yes uh -huh. i think i don't know if you want peace you must abandon the teacher of attack the ego the teacher of peace will never <laughs> abandon you you can desert him but he will never reciprocate for his faith in you is his understanding it is as firm as is his faith in his creator and he knows that faith in his creator must encompass faith in his creation in this consistency lies his holiness, which he cannot abandon, for it is not his will to do so. With your perfection ever in his sight, he gives the gift of peace to everyone who perceives the need for peace and who would have it. Make way for peace and it will come, for understanding is in you and from it peace must come oh, beautiful mm -hmm, yeah mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <clears throat> yes so <clears throat> if you want peace you must abandon the teacher of attack so if you're perceiving attack in the in the situation you you need to look at that and say okay that can't be true you have to question that um <clears throat> uh, because the teacher of peace will never abandon you. So for example, we can believe that, oh, you know, um, viruses can attack me. So we become afraid. So once we're in fear, then we believe that we can be attacked, right? Because we are no longer... Um, recognizes recognizing our oneness um, as invulnerability and we go into defense which is vulnerability to attack so the so to to embrace defense, you know, or attack means that we are abandoning the um, our right mind, the Holy Spirit guidance. You can desert him. So we desert him, capital H, but Holy Spirit will never reciprocate. Okay, for his faith in you is his understanding. He knows us truly, so he understands us truly. <clears throat> Um, yes, and so he has faith. <laughs> faith in his creator must encompass faith in his creation. There's no separation. So if we have faith in God, then we have faith in the creation of God. So we, we can trust that everything um, works for good if we allow, we get out of the way. We get our ego out of the way. <clears throat> okay. Uh, one line, his, his faith in you is his understanding. Mm -hmm. That, I don't know, that struck me. That's line three, part of that sentence. Yes. So he will never abandon us because of the faith that he has in us. Mm. <laughs> and, and, he, and he has faith in us because he is us. So he knows himself. <laughs> and he knows that this, none of this is real. It's a dream. So how can he not have faith in himself as the well, Holy that's Spirit? That's to think about. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, because, yeah. Okay, well, he's trusted me to do this with him. So, okay, let's do it. <laughs> yeah, yes. So, um, 
so the difficult, what seems to be a difficult situation means that we are, it's an opportunity to develop that faith and that trust. Mm. Um, in, in, in that we are not abandoned. We are, um, you know, completely care, loved, completely loved um, at every moment. No abandonment. Just because we go into fear doesn't mean that we're abandoned. So there's almost like a, a remembering in the back, in the back there somewhere of the presence of love that is always with us, constant, even though there's this sort of veil of darkness that seems to, you know, kind of go over the perception of the body's eyes, come over. <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> and that's the gift of peace that we can, um, you know, that we can accept and remember. Um, he gives the gift of peace to everyone who perceives the need for peace and who would have it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I'd rather have peace than this. Holy Spirit. <laughs> I would rather have peace than this. So I'm open to receiving it. <clears throat> okay, let's see. Okay, paragraph 15. Okay, your turn, Connie. It's your turn. Is it my turn? Because <laughs> we, we jumped around. <laughs> okay. Okay. okay, that's all right. <laughs> the power of God from which they both arise is yours as surely as it is his. Okay, you think you know him not only because alone it is impossible to know him. Yet see the mighty works that he will do through you. And you must be convinced you did them through him. It is impossible to deny the source of effects so powerful they could not be of you. Leave room for him and you will find yourself so filled with power that nothing will prevail against your peace. And this will be the test by which you recognize that you have understood. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yes, so, so that, that piece, so within that piece is that, is that sense of power that dispels illusions, um, which is which is the miracle, um, which brings healing, uh, because those that would be the effects, the dispelling of the illusions, whatever you know, however it shows up in form. Um, so. And that's, let's see, and so, um, and so the test, that will be the test when we can have the peace that nothing um, will prevail against it. <clears throat> because, because then the mind is no longer, um, what's the word? Um, Mm, deceived by the illusions of the events uh, that seem to happen in the world. You know, the, the divisiveness stuff, whatever it is. Um, it, it reminded me of something I read in one of Gary Renard's books that he said that he was at a mall one time and Someone was stabbed right in front of him. But, you know, he didn't lose his peace. So the peace stayed with him. So he was just able to assist the person that was stabbed without, um, 
getting caught up in the drama and the, the fear and all of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so that's the end of the section. Um, the test of truth is peace and understanding. <laughs> <laughs> the test of truth. So, um, okay. So, any questions, Connie, before we stop? No, I think that was very rich. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, next time we'll start chapter 15, the holy instant. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay, so thank you, everyone, for joining. And until next time, bye. Thank you. Thank you.